What's up guys, my name is Pro and these are my top 5 must have gear upgrades for escaping mid game in old school runescape. We're going to be going over, in my opinion, some of the absolute top things you're going to need to escape the mid game. Starting off with the Osmutton's Fang, I would say that one of the best upgrades that you can get besides the whip is going to be the Fang. Against high defense monsters, this is going to be your weapon of choice. And with the price all the way down to 30 mil at the moment, or like close around that, if you can grab one, I would go ahead and get it. This weapon requires level 82 attack, so if you're not quite at that level, I would recommend another weapon. This Fang has two unique passive effects which aim to make it effective against targets with high defense levels and more consistent overall. Rerolling accuracy on an unsuccessful hit. Elite Void is going to be one of the best things that you can get for the account. It's perfect for a lot of budget setups and you can get this pretty early in the account. You will buy this from the minigame pest control after you get the regular Void armor set then you can upgrade it to the Elite Void after completing the Hard Western Provenance Diaries. The Elite Void only consists of the top and the bottom. This will be a range, melee, and mage setup. All you have to do is switch the helmets out, which everything else stays the same, so it's a good switching armor set. You can get the Elite Void armor set by having 42 attack, 42 straight, defense, magic, hit points, and range, as well as 22 prayer. You also need to complete the Hard Western Providence Diaries, which is not bad, especially if you have some of your combat achievements done, you'll get extra reward points for doing pest control, it's, it's a good time, it's really easy. Next up on the list we have the Bofa and Crystal Armor. In my opinion, once you can afford it, the Bofa and Crystal Armor set are going to be probably the biggest upgrades to your account besides like getting max gear. You can do so much with the raids and Zolra, especially with the both only Zolra method. It's a lot easier than doing switches, but you should still learn switches. It's good at Phantom Muspa and much more. You will make your money back in no time. When you put the bow and armor together, it gives you a massive range accuracy buff. The T-Bow is going to be the better damage, but it's also 15 times the price. The Bow of Fair Denon is a powerful elven bow created from the Enchanted Crystal Weapon Seed. It requires 80 range and 70 agility to wield, offering the highest range attack and range strength bonus for its speed. It can also be corrupted to prevent the degradation of the weapon. To make a bow, you will need 100 crystal shards and an enhanced crystal weapon seed, accomplished after completing Song of the Elves and having level 82 smithing and crafting. Alternatively, NPCs Conwina or Risi can do it for 150 crystal shards. Similar to the crystal bow, it doesn't need arrows. It generates the arrows on its own. Crystal armor will boost its damage and accuracy, maxing at 15% damage and 30% accuracy with a full set. In combat, it's less DPS than a Twisted Bow or Toxic Blowpipe, determined by the target, if it has high defense or not. However, it has no significant drawbacks, offers consistent performance, high accuracy, damage per shot, moderate speed, and long range, all in the Bofa. Another ranged weapon, the Ventinator Bow, is up next, requiring a range level of 80 to wield, and it is crafted by combining 5 Ventinator Shards, or Ball at the Grand Exchange. This bow has a range of 6 or 8 with long range, and can shoot any type of arrow. Unlike some weapons, it doesn't degrade, but it has a passive effect that consumes charges. It's amazing for AFK Slayer, much like barraging, but you can include many more Slayer monsters to this list while using the bow. The Ventinator bow features a unique passive effect that relies on Ancient Essence to function. While attacking in multi-combat areas, the bow will fire an additional arrow at a nearby target. This arrow can then bounce again to either the original target or a third nearby target. Bouncing arrows only hit targets within two squares of the original target. Each Ancient Essence adds a one charge to the bow with a maximum capacity of 50,000 shards. One charge is deducted per attack regardless of how many 
bounces occur. A fully charged bow lasts about 33.33 hours of continuous combat before reverting to its uncharged state. Next up on the list, we have the Light Bearer. The Light Bearer is a special ring that you can obtain as a rare reward from the Tomb of a Masket. Crafted by the warrior Amic, it was created using the unstable energy left behind after the Tumican sacrifice that ended the Handarin Zarasin War. This unique ring has no special requirements to wear and provides accelerated gain of the player's special attack energy regeneration, restoring it twice as fast at a rate of 15 seconds per 10% of special attack or 150 seconds for full special attack. Equipping or unequipping the ring resets the special attack energy regeneration timer. This is very useful for raids. You will find yourself using this on most bosses if you have the right special attack weapon. And you don't have to switch like your rings out for like an, an, a magic ring or an archer ring or a melee ring. It's just one combat style, style and it regenerates your special attack. And that's another reason it's good in raids. If you like this video and you want to learn more about escaping mid-game, go ahead and click on this video right here.